The House of Representatives on Tuesday called on President Muhammad Buhari to stop the planned oper operation positive identification by the military. The decision followed a motion of urgent public importance moved by the minority leader Ndudi Elumelu at the plenary session presided over by the Speaker Femi Badabi Amila. Operation Positive Identification is an operation the military claims would allow Nigerians to provide documentary proof of identity to separate citizens from aliens and to checkmate bandits, kidnappers, and robbers, ethnic militias, and other criminal elements in the society. Elumelu described the proposed operation as infringement on the rights of Nigerians. Also, the deputy minority leader, Tobi Okechuku, said the proposed plan is not within the mandate of the army. Now, earlier in our news, Biodun Shoumi shared his view on the matter. You cannot militarize the country under the guise that we want to prevent aliens from coming in or identify aliens already in the country, or we want to check um, armed robbers or kidnappers. Uh, the fact of the matter is, if you go through the constitution, the main function of the Nigerian military is to protect the country from external aggression. In fact, the only condition upon which the Nigerian soldiers could be called to police for policing duty is if there is a total breakdown of law and order, and the Nigerian police force now decides that, look, we just cannot cope, you know, with the crisis. Currently, we, we don't have a crisis. We don't have such a crisis of that magnitude that we were around bringing in soldiers to do that. What you see is that the army is overreaching itself and being indulged by the federal government against the provision of the Constitution. They are not trained on policing duty. The job of identifying aliens belongs to immigration. You cannot keep the immigration department there and then ask the army to do their job. Is it that you scrap the immigration department and expand the functions of the military? As long as that has not taken place, it is totally wrong. Two, the soldiers are not trained. The military are not trained, you know, to investigate you know, carry out intelligence uh, gathering on criminals. It is strictly the functions, functions of the Nigerian police force. So I don't know what will be gained, you know, by bringing in untrained soldiers, you know, particularly on policing duty, you know, to uh, come and try and identify criminals and all that. Because at the end of the day, you are likely going to have an increase in complaints harassment of people, violation of fundamental rights of Nigerians to free movement. And at the end of the day, some people might even end up being shot, because soldiers are not trained to arrest people. They were trained to—they're trained to actually kill. The police are trained, you know, to arrest people and prosecute. The soldiers cannot even prosecute, you know, people who they found to have infringed the law. They have to hand them over to the police. So, therefore, bringing in the soldiers in this situation is totally wrong. And I think the House of Reps is completely right. Uh, they are also saying that the publicity, the sensitization of the people on the military activity is very poor. Do you agree? In the first instance, it has to be poor because they have no business in policing duty. Well, all what the claim they want to achieve are principally the jobs of two agencies. One, the Nigerian police force. The other is immigration. And in any case, how many soldiers do we have in the country? We have less than 170,000 uh, military personnel. The Nigerian police force can boast of close to 400,000, you know, police officers. Yes, we do not have enough. The critical issue is the training. Soldiers are not trained to investigate and apprehend suspects. They are trained to liquidate suspects, whereas the police are trained to identify, investigate, identify, and then prosecute, you know. And same thing with immigration. They are trained in the same way like the Nigerian police force. So, therefore, it, it, there is no need for it. It's totally uncalled for. If we need to do a massive orientation of our people. We have a national orientation agency. The Nigerian police force have very good um, public relations officers, you know, who could, you know, do the same functions. I cannot see the military, you know, doing a good job when it comes to sensitizing the public about their involvement in policing affairs. I cannot see how that would happen. Do you see them scrapping this operation, or it's something that's it's going to go ahead in spite of the concerns of the House of Reps. If we are to go by the antecedents of the military in Nigeria, this is not the first time people have been complaining about their involvement in policing. Um, they've never stopped. I mean, the military will just decide to have their way. They have decided to do it, and then they will go uh, go ahead and do it, irrespective of whether it's a violation of the Constitution, you know, in terms of freedom of movement of the people or not. Except, in this case, somebody approached the court, and then the court can't stop them. But I cannot see the military of, on his own saying no.
except the order comes from the commander in chief, which is President Muhammad Buhari, who in any case is not in the country currently. Doesn't this further blight their reputation if they continue in this part, you know, going ahead in spite of concerns raised by credible Nigerians? Already we have so many, so big problem with the image of our military, particularly if you have links with people in Human Rights Watch or Amnesty International. Uh, many people, including governments, are concerned about the human rights record of the Nigerian army. And that is one of the factors militating against sales of weapons to Nigeria, which has made our war against Boko um, Haram or other insurgency, you know, almost ineffectual at a point. But the fact of the matter is, I cannot see how going ahead with this will improve their, uh, their, their, image. their image. It will rather create more problems for them, because there will be more references, you know, to look, the harassment of people, restriction of free, uh, freedom of movement. I cannot see somebody asking me to bring my ID card to prove I'm a Nigerian. In the first instance, I don't even carry one around. So, you should begin to carry one around. <laughs> so, so, so you are likely going to have litigations that people will go to court once they are asked on this issue. So it will never help the military. I cannot see what they stand to gain in this. Felicity, as we get there in an earlier conversation, and still on the Operation uh, Positive Identification, the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights and the letter to the president dated October 28 and signed by its national president, Dr. Osagi Obayuwana, said Nigeria has outgrown the crudity of the military, issuing warnings to the nation as a whole for a population of about 200 million persons to carry valid means of identification whenever they are going out to avoid being seen as criminally minded uh, people by the soldiers. Now, the committee urged the president to rather pursue economic and social policies that will address the root cause of crime and win the confidence and cooperation of the majority of the people as a way of reducing deviant behavior to the barest minimum. The program portends encroachment of police duties by soldiers who cannot be said to be well trained for civic duties. The operation will seriously infringe on the freedom of the movement of the people of Nigeria, a right constitu constitutionally protected by Section 41 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, which entitles every citizen to move freely throughout Nigeria. To our knowledge, no state of emergency has been declared to warrant this wholesale interference with the rights of the people, the statement added. Now, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Chief Mike Ozekome, has called on the entire National Assembly th to throw its weight behind the call to suspend the Operation Positive Identification, which he described as the height of insanity and madness. Ozekome said the entire National Assembly should descend on this policy heavily to show that it is not a rubber stamp National Assembly. Ozekome is expecting they would not just shut it, but put it in their votes and proceedings, pass the motions and stop the initiative. He frowns at the idea of telling citizens to produce their identity cards or driving license or passports when they are on the streets of their own country. He said, and I quote, even the United States of America does not tell foreigners to produce their passports or driving licenses when they go about their normal duties, end of quote. Now, in the same vein, a former second vice president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mondo Ubani, tagged the plan by the army as unlawful. Ubani, who seems to support the suspension of the plan by the army, wonders which law permits the army to do such. According to him, since the call for the suspension of the plan is coming from the House of Representatives, it means no law has been made to give the army the power to embark on such a plan. It would have been an unlawful act by the army, he added. Meanwhile, the chairman of the International Society for Civil Liberties and Rule of Law, Emeka Umeag Balasi, said the exercise would, would be an avenue for extortion. He stated, and I quote, apart from being elitist and clear grounds for extortion or road, roadway bribery, indiscriminate arrests, abductions, torture, extrajudicial and unlawful killings and disappearances, it also expressly means that Nigerians or citizens without such elitist documents, including the aging and underage, automatically become kidnappers, armed robbers, bandits, assonists, cultists, and rapists.